Okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about mirrors and stuff. And stuff. Okay? Uh, before we can start talking about mirrors and understanding what's going on there, we're going to talk about what y'all see in the everyday. Okay? The everyday. So there are a lot of terms in physics, okay, that sound exactly the same as what you say when you're out in, you know, when you're just talking and have very similar meaning, but because of the context, they're really specific, okay? Uh, one of those words, and we're going to deal with a bunch of those words, okay? One of them, and you probably don't use this in your everyday language, like when you're talking to your friends, uh, but one of those words is object. Object, okay? Now, what does object mean? Not object, not object, because that's like, I don't want to do it, okay? But an object. A thing, right? It's a thing. It's a tangible, physical thing that you can pick up, play with, and show your friends. Okay? It's an object. Okay? Uh, now, so you are you are all objects, correct? And I am an object. And the things I'm playing with right now are objects. And everything that we see are objects. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the lights. And I'm going to ask you, are all of the things that you just saw, assuming that nothing snuck out underneath the door, are all of them still here? Yes. Yes. So the objects are here whether or not we see them or not. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Because the thing is still a thing even if we can't see it. All right? So, so what you're seeing are not objects. Okay? Objects are present whether you see them or not. So the seeing thing is something different. Okay? 99% of the time, or even greater than that, your experience will tell you that what you see is actually there. Because most of the time, what we have is another word called an image. Okay? An image. An image is something that you see. It's a picture, right? If you get a, a, another word that we use for a picture is an image. Okay? An image is something that you see, something that's in your mind. Okay? So when we form an image, right, we're seeing a picture of something. Now, in our everyday life, almost 100% of the time, the images coexist with the objects. Right? When I look at... Or, yeah, when I look at Allison, she's there, right? And when I see her, I see her as being there. So the object Allison is where the image Allison is. Okay? And this is just the way the world works. There are a few exceptions to that. Now, to us being, you know, the really smart people that we have with all the experience that we have, we know that mirrors do weird things. Okay? And so we've learned to deal with them. But when you take a baby, all right, that hasn't seen a mirror before, or you take an animal that hasn't seen mirrors before, birds are notorious for this, okay? They look into the mirror, and they see stuff, right? They see something in the mirror. And they literally think what they see is actually in the mirror. And why do they th think that? Why do they think that? Why do they? Why do babies and you know dogs that haven't been around mirrors and, and other creatures that you know might not think quite as, as as well as we do? Why do they think that there are little things that live inside the mirror? And you know that like birds think there's something inside the mirror because they're always pecking at the mirror, trying to get at the the other bird that lives in the mirror. Because their experience tells them, wherever the object is, wherever I see the image of the object, that's where it's at. So now you're seeing images in the mirror. But there are no objects in the mirror because, you know, there's, nothing, there's no place for them to live in there. Okay? And so anything that you see in the mirror isn't actually in the mirror. Now it's kind of tough for this discussion though, right? Because we've had, we have even more experience than that. And so when we look in the mirror, Adrian, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? No, no, when you look in this mirror right now, oh, what do you see? Gilbert. You see Gilbert, okay? Gilbert, what do you see? 
Adrian. You see Adrian, right? Okay. And so y'all are seeing each other. And Adrian, you know that Gilbert's not actually in the mirror. And Gilbert, you know that Adrian's not in the mirror. Because there's not enough room for both of you to live in the mirror. Okay? So you know that you're not you're outside of the mirror. Okay? However, if you were an infant, when you looked in the mirror, you'd think Gilbert was in the mirror. Okay? And same thing. Gilbert, if you were an infant, you'd think Adrian lived in the mirror. Okay? Just like little kids when they come up to a TV set, right? They're looking for the little guy that lives inside the TV set. How did they get the people inside the TV set? How do they get those mountains inside the TV set? How do they get them so small? Okay? Well, those are images just like a mirror's image, right? But those images are devoid of the object. Because what happens with the mirror is the mirror changes the path of the light. Normally, wherever the object is, the light comes down and it hits them, right? So, for instance, with the, when I turn the light off, right? All of y'all can see each other's images right now. And then when I turn the light off, you can't see each other. Okay? You might if you squint your eyes and want your eyes adjust from that. But and I, I couldn't see the table I just walked into. All right? Why? Because the light that was allowing us to form the image is gone now. Where was that light coming from? Above. It was coming from above you, right? It was coming from the lights in the ceiling. So the light comes down, it hits me in the face, bounces off my face, and hits y'all in the eyes. And so the light from my face is literally hitting you in the eye. And that's why you can see me. But if I turn the light off, then all of a sudden it, the light doesn't hit my face, it doesn't bounce off, and it doesn't hit you in the eye. So you don't form an image. So image depends not only on the object, but it also depends on the path of the light. Okay? The light goes from me to you, so you know I am here. However, with the mirror, the mirror, the light path, strikes the mirror and bounces off. So Gilbert can see Adrian. Right? Light goes, hits Adrian's face, bounces off Adrian's face, comes this way, hits the mirror, bounces off, and goes to Gilbert, and so Gilbert can see Adrian. So Adrian, when he looks in the mirror, he sees the light coming from Gilbert. And it does the exact same thing. And so if we were to imaginary, if we were to draw the line back, okay, so if we were to assume that this is no longer a mirror, if this is a window, and Gilbert were to, to see Adrian, Adrian would have to be over here. And Gilbert would have to be over there in order to form the same image. But because the path of the light is changed by the mirror, then the image is no longer where the object is. Okay? So an image and an object are not the same thing. They depend on the path of the light. <laughs> All right, so let's draw something and put this in your notes. We're going to start off straight forward, okay? And this is the side of my mirror. So if I take my mirror and I turn it sideways, then I'm looking at the side of a flat mirror, right? This is known as a plain mirror, okay? A plain mirror. Not plain as in boring but plane is in P-L-A-N-E, plane mirror, okay? Now, I'm going to take a little guy, and I'm going to stand him on this side of the plane mirror. And when the little guy looks into the mirror, he's going to see an image of himself on the other side of the mirror. He would see somebody who looked exactly like him, Although that one looks big, because I can't draw. <laughs> now, when they're drawing an image, they make it dotted so that you know that it's not a real object. That it's an image of an object. Okay? And so what we have here is we have a person and this is our object, and this is our image. So the distance from the object to the mirror is known as the object distance. And the distance from 
the mirror to the image is known as the image distance. Okay. Pretty straightforward. The image distance is how far the image appears from the mirror. Okay. So if you assume that this were a window, then the image that you see in a mirror would have to be that far away. There's a couple, two more things that we're going to add to it. We're going to have an, our object over here, he's also got a certain height, right? So we have object height. And by the same token, this guy appears to have a height. And so we have an image We have an object height and an image height. Now, going back to our mirror, okay? When we look in our mirror, okay? And if, you, if you're having a hard time seeing the mirror, that's fine. Just use your own experience, okay? When you look in a flat mirror like this, like the one that you have on your bathroom wall, are you the same size as you always were? No. Really? Do you want to see it? So when you look at when you look in this mirror, okay, can you see yourself? Yeah. Are you the same size as you always are? Okay. Yeah, you appear to be the same size, right? When I go in the, a bathroom mirror and I'm like combing my hair and stuff, well, I, if I had hair to comb, uh, then like I see myself the same size, right? So in a flat mirror, we don't have any what we call magnification, okay? Magnification is how big you are, right? If you have a magnification greater than one, that means you're bigger than you were. And if you have a magnification of less than one, that means you're smaller than you were. And the reason for that is this, okay? Because if a flat plane mirror has no magnification, then people like to say the magnification is zero, right? But if I take an object, or I take any number, let's say I take the number five, right? So I'm five feet tall, and then I multiply it times zero, now how tall am I? Zero. Yeah. I'm zero. I don't exist anymore. Okay? So we can't do that with magnification. Instead of, magnif instead of saying if there's no magnification, we, we have a magnification of zero, what we say is that if there's a magnification of one, then I'm the same height I always was. So I say if my object is five feet tall or five meters or whatever, and it has a magnification of one, then my image is still five feet tall. Okay? So a magnification of one means that there's no magnification. You're the same size as you always were. The identity property. When you multiply any number times one, you get that number. Well, if you multiply any image or any object by one, you still get that object's height. And so in a flat plane mirror, our magnification is one. This person is the same height as that person. Does that make sense? Okay. That is not always the case though, right? You walk into a fun house or some other place, right? And you look at their mirrors. Their mirrors, you're like all wavy. You get stretched out this way. You get stretched out that way. You get scrunched up or all the other good stuff. And so if we change the mirror, we change how the light reflects off of it, right? And if you change the path of the light, you change the thing that you see. You change the image. You're not changing the object. This person is going to be the way that person always is. But if I take my plane mirror and then I make it wavy, then all of a sudden the light bounces all crazy. And so the image I get is crazy. 